Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from sysadmin102. In uh, today's video, I will show you how to set up the email alert using uh, Monit on AppSense. Like always, thank you for your support. And if you think the video is uh, helpful, don't forget to subscribe like, and share at the end of the video. And before we get started, we're going to go over some of the requirements. So uh, the requirement that you need to have a Google account with the two-factor authentications or 2 FA enable. Uh, that way you can get the app password. Uh, secondly, you need to be able to access uh, the AppSense uh, web interface. And before we dive into uh, step number one, we're going to do a quick version check. Uh, so currently I'm using uh, version 24.7. And uh, like always, before you uh, do anything with your firewall, uh, I highly recommend it that you uh, head it over to system and configurations and backups make a backup of your configuration so in case anything happen you can restore from the uh, last no good configurations it's uh, pretty simple all you just do is uh, download the configurations uh, you have the option to encrypt the configuration file i highly recommend you to uh, encrypt the file uh, because it depends on your set uh, setup it might uh, have uh, sensitive information in there so the best way to keep a configuration encrypted and with that let's get started uh, with uh, step number one uh, which we're going to generate the uh, gmail app password all right subsection one of uh, step one if you haven't uh, enabled the two-factor authentication on your google account you would need to do so in order to do that you will log into your google account you can use the link in the written tutorial or the link going to be down in uh, the descriptions and from there, you would uh, enable the two-factor authentications. When you've done that, uh, you can go back to the Rington tutorial and you can uh, select the VA and manage uh, your app password. All right, and from here, we're going to give it the name. We're going to call it uh, AppSense SDMP, and we're going to select uh, VA. So keep in mind, the uh, Google uh, going to give you this one-time password. Um, the minute you close this, you're not going to be able to see it again. So I highly recommended you to copy it down to a note or a text file. Also, another uh, note, Google actually generated the space in between. However, when you input the thing into the mail server password, uh, there's no space in between. It should just be uh, all the letter. So I will copy the uh, app password into the note and then remove the space in between. Moving on to the uh, next step, we're going to go back to uh, AppSense portal. And from there, we will go to uh, services and select uh, Monit. And we're going to select uh, settings. And first, we're going to check the enable Monit. So the polling interval, it determines how often it will check for a particular service resource or a system uh, parameter. I recommend to set this uh, to 30 seconds. Star delay, uh, 120 seconds uh, default. I recommend to keep the default setting. Uh, so what it means is Monit will wait before the monitor, before monitoring a service after the system restart or after the service has been restarted. This setting is helpful because it gives the service time to initialize properly before Monit starts checking the status. If you uh, shorten the star delay, uh, you might get a bunch of notification because the service is still starting, but Monit gonna identify it at uh, not probably working or the service is down or, uh, you know, something similar to that. And then next is a mail server address. That's gonna be the, um, we're gonna go back to my Rinton tutorial. That's gonna be the Google Mail uh, STMP uh, mail server address. You can copy from my Rinton tutorial. And then mail uh, server port uh, at uh, 587 for Gmail. Mail server username, that's going to be your email at gmail.com. And then mail server password, it, the password that we uh, generated earlier. Uh, keep in mind that it's not including uh, the space in between. And lastly, we're going to check the mail server SSL uh, connection. And we're going to set it and we're going to apply the uh, changes. 
Next, we're going to set up the alert settings. So I'm going to go over the alert settings. And then currently at default at uh, root and uh, local host dot local, we can change this to our uh, Gmail. So it's going to be your email at gmail.com. And then we're going to select enable alert as well. The not on option, if you check that option, it basically going to reverse uh, whatever you choose under the event. So if you select not on, and then let's say you check the action done. So the action done going to be disregard and everything else going to be um, selected. So that's the reverse selections. So we're going to uncheck that not on. And for the event, you're going to select the uh, event that you want to monitor. Uh, I'm going to explain it in another video uh, that going to go in the detail for this one. But for now, we're going to select a uh, Monit instant changes. Uh, that's something I wish that option included in here that the option to test the SDMP uh, mail servers to make sure that the configuration is good. However, they don't have the options. Uh, the easy way to test it is to restart the Monit service and set the alert for um, the Monit instant changes. So that's why when you restart the Monit, you will get a notification from your email. If you don't, then uh, obviously uh, we need to go over the setting and see if uh, is there something that we did incorrectly. All right. In addition to that, I'm going to select uh, connection fail and content fail, ping fail, link down and uh, status fail. For the mail format, you can uh, copy the format that I created for uh, my options. Uh, these are customizable, so uh, you can create it however you like. So the one that have the uh, dollar sign in front of it is going to re be releasing for the actual date. And uh, same thing for the services and the day and the descriptions. You can tailor it to however you like it. And uh, for the templates, you can release the domain with your domain name. Uh, do you really need the preplay to? Not really. It's up to you. You want to include it or not. But typically, that's how the template is going to look like. Reminder. So this is how often you want uh, Monir to send out alert. We can set it at the 10 cycle. So after 10 cycle and the server is still down or, um, you know, the gateway is still down. Monit gonna send you another notification after 10 cycle and uh, descriptions so you can create a multiple alert that customized to a different kind of email or you can use the same email but separate it by a different event and uh, if that's the case you can uh, make it a description so you know what this is for and when we done that we're gonna accept it and we're gonna apply changes and moving on to the service settings. All right, for uh, service settings, uh, in this video, I want to cover the default uh, service settings. Uh, in the future video, I will show you how to create a custom service settings. So in here, the first one, uh, host, that going to monitor the load average, CPU usage, and uh, memory usage, stuff like that. Uh, the next one, we have root F. Uh, it's going to monitor for uh, display usage. Uh, the hell as well as the uh, any errors. Car status change. Uh, so car is stand for common address redundancy uh, protocol, which is used for high availability or HA in absence. You can use this uh, variable to monitor the status of a car interfaces to get an alert when there is a failover or a changes in the status of your HA system. For example, if you have primary knot fails and the second knot will take over, Monit will send an alert that there have been a car status change. So that's what the car uh, status change is for. If you only have one uh, router at home, uh, you don't need that option. And then lastly, it, the gateway alert. Uh, so it's useful for alert when your gateway becomes unreachable or is back online. If your system is configured with the multiple gateway for uh, redundancies or load balancing, you can set up Monit to uh, notify you 
if one of the gateway goes down or come back online. For home user, you're most likely going to have one ISP server provider. You're not going to have a lot balancing or redundancy for the HA setup, meaning that if the servers are disconnected, there's no internet backup internet for Monit to send out the alert. However, that alert can stay with the system when uh, your internet restore, the connection restore, you will get the notification from Monit. It's going to be um, possibly multiple notifications saying that, hey, the gateway is down at this time. And hey, at this time, the gateway will restore. And note that up sends you a custom uh, script for the gateway alert, uh, which require uh, you to set up a gateway group. If you don't have a gateway group config, even though you enable the gateway alert, you will not get any uh, gateway alert uh, in case of your gateway going down. All right, and we're gonna select uh, that last option, enable, and we're gonna select apply. And next, I'm gonna explain to you what the server test setting is. All right, so for the server test setting, it's basically a trigger. So when the condition is met, then it would trigger uh, Monit to send out an alert. So for ping, the condition gonna be a fail ping. So if it fail, it's gonna send out an alert. And these are how it, these are the condition that gonna trigger Monit to send out an alert. And yes, you can create a custom um, to trigger Monit to send out an alert for whatever service that you um, wanna do. And before we're gonna create the gateway group, to test it out the setting and make sure that the mail server is able to send out the notifications. I'm going to show you a few um, custom server tests as well as server settings. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I will release this in the next video. So these are the custom server settings on one of my firewall that running within my home network. And as you see, I created a portal fail locking attempt. Uh, Open VPN client login, ACME uh, client renew. So somebody uh, tried to attempt to log in my portal. Uh, it's gonna send me a notification uh, if it's a fail login. Uh, Open VPN client login. Somebody logging into an Open VPN server. It's gonna send me a notification with the IP address of the person that logging into my uh, server. And lastly, uh, ACME client renew. Um, so when ACME uh, script execute the renewal script and if a successful renewal, I'm gonna get a notification saying that it successfully renewed the certificate. So in order for this service setting to work, I have to create the custom server test setting as well. Uh, and in there, obviously I created three uh, portal fail locking monitoring, uh, option, Open VPN client login and then ACME client renew. Um, I'm still playing around with the uh, try to aim more custom alert. Uh, if you're interesting, make sure that you follow my channel. Uh, one of the bad thing is there are not a lot of documentations on the options on how to do these. Uh, Monet is actually pretty customizable. However, you need to know how uh, it works. The um, condition that gonna trigger the alert. And figure out the logic, uh, how to trigger the alert smartly. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to create the gateway group. So that's why that we can active the gateway alert. All right. So when you go to uh, system, and we can select gateways, and we're gonna select uh, first. We're gonna check uh, configurations, and then select whichever gateway that you want to get receive notifications. And from here, uh, just make sure that the disable gateway monitoring is uh, unchecked. And then we're gonna save it and select apply. And next we're gonna select group and we're gonna add a new group. I'm gonna call it WAN and tier one. There are different trigger level. You can select member DAO, package loss, high latency, packet loss or high latency. Uh, I usually select the last one. In here, you can input the descriptions or you can leave it blank, totally up to you. Once you've done that, we're gonna save it and we're gonna select uh, apply changes. All right, so right now the status is online. We're gonna simulate that the gateway is offline. So we're gonna go to configurations 
and we're gonna select edit and then we can uh, select mark gateway as DAO let's save it and apply all right you see the status is DAO and if you uh, go down to uh, services and under monit and under log file so notice it didn't lock it right away that because we set the um, polling at uh, 30 seconds so if you shorten the polling it the quicker it's gonna start checking on the service and then start locking it there we go so now it's checking on a server and it's say that you know gateway GW gateway is DAO all right and now we're gonna go back to uh, system and gateway configurations and then we're gonna mark the gateway uncheck the mark gateway as DAO and apply changes all right and the gateway is up so we are gonna receive an email saying that you know the gateway is DAO and then you should receive another email pretty soon uh, that's saying that the gateway is up so now we receive our second email saying that you know the gateway is up now in the next video, I will show you how to uh, create the custom server setting as well as the server test settings. Uh, like always, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.